In this video, we're going to be finding all of the trigonometric functions of an angle written in standard position on the coordinate plane using a coordinate point. Now just to refresh your memory on angles and standard position, they always start at the vertex, they go out with their initial side on the x-axis, they move counterclockwise as we're measuring, and then they have a terminal side that is somewhere around the coordinate plane. So the easiest way to really understand this concept is to dive in and take a look at the example in front of us. So here it says, let negative 4, 3 be a point on the terminal side of the angle theta. So what that's really saying is that we're going to plot the point negative 4, 3 and draw a standard angle that goes to that point. So we're going to go to x is negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Y is positive 1, 2, 3, so we're going to go to this location here. That's where our terminal side of our angle is going to be. And we're going to then from there draw a triangle and find all of the key components. So here I'm going to put the initial side of my angle. Here is my initial side. And then it goes all the way around here to my terminal side ending at the coordinate point x is negative 4, y is 3. So that's our angle there. Now, when we're going to find the six trigonometric functions, what we're going to do is we're going to create a right triangle with this angle that also uses the x-axis. So when we make this right triangle, it's always going to connect to the x-axis, wherever it is in relation to that angle. So in this case, we're going to draw a right triangle connecting down to the x-axis right here. And what we can do once we have a right triangle is we can label it. So in this case, my x is negative 4, my y is 3, and if I can find what this hypotenuse length is, I can then start finding the six trigonometric functions for that particular triangle. So let's start by finding this missing hypotenuse value here. I'm just going to denote it as x for the time being. So we know we can use the Pythagorean theorems. So we have 3 squared plus negative 4 squared is equal to x squared. So we have 9 plus 16 is equal to x squared. So that's 25 is equal to x squared. Square root both sides. And we find that our x value is equal to 5. So I can go ahead and I can erase that, five val or that x value there and I can replace that with 5. So I started off by drawing my angle with a terminal side that ended at this point, and then I drew a right triangle that connected down to the x-axis and found that missing side length. Now from here, we're going to find the six trigonometric ratios, but we know that we need to have a reference to an angle. So just like we drew our triangle down to the x-axis, the angle that we're going to use as a reference as we draw standard angles, because we know this was our standard angle right here, is always going to be the angle that's formed with the x-axis. So another note to make is that the angle of reference, so you can put, you know, the angle that we're going to reference is always the one formed with the x-axis. So we'll do another example where we can see this might move but the angle we're going to use as a reference is always formed with the x-axis. So now that we have our angle drawn in there, we can start by finding all of our six trigonometric ratios. So here let's start with sine of theta. So we know that sine of our angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Well, opposite is here at across the angle at 3, so we have opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5. Then we move on to cosine of theta, which we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is immediately next to the angle, so that's negative 4 over 5. And then tangent is going to be opposite, which is 3, over adjacent, which is negative 4. Then we know that sine pairs with cosecant, they're going to be reciprocal, so cosecant is simply that flipped over. Secant is simply cosine flipped over, and cotangent is simply tangent flipped over, because all of these are reciprocals of these three functions. 
let's try one more example here. It says let negative 2, negative 5 be a point on the terminal side of the angle. So we're going to start here in initial form, and we're going to go all the way to negative 2, negative 5. So x is negative 2, y is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to plot to this point right here. That's going to be our terminal angle. And if you want to denote that it goes all the way to here, you can. You don't necessarily need to, but you can denote that it goes around in that way. Now, as I said on the previous slide, we're always going to draw a triangle with this particular angle. So we've plotted this point of negative 2, negative 5. We've also drawn our terminal side of that angle. And now we're going to draw our triangle. Remember, we're going to draw a right triangle. And it's always going to connect to the x-axis, wherever it is. Now in this case, the x-axis is above the point. So we're actually going to go from that point and draw it straight up to the x-axis and draw our right triangle in there. So now we can see we have our right triangle. We also have a couple of side lengths on that right triangle that we can label. We know that the x here is negative 2 and the y here is negative 5. The last thing we need to note is that the angle of reference is always going to be the one that connects to the x-axis. So here we're going to have our angle right there connecting to the x-axis. So we at least have three pieces of our triangle. Now if we're going to find all six trigonometric ratios, we need to start by finding this missing side length, which is right here. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So we have negative 5 squared plus negative 2 squared is equal to our missing value of x squared. So we have 25 plus 4 is equal to x squared. That's simply 29. Unfortunately, that's not a perfect square, so x is going to just be left as the square root of 29. So this third side length here is going to be the square root of 29. So now from here we need to find all six trigonometric ratios. So we have sine of our angle, which if we look we do opposite, which is across from the angle, so opposite is negative 5, over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 29. Now we know we can't leave it in this way, we can't have square roots in our denominator, so we're going to rationalize that denominator here by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 29, which becomes negative 5 square root of 29 over 29. We then move on to cosine of theta, which is going to be adjacent, so negative 2 over the square root of 29. We need to rationalize that denominator, so we multiply it by the square root of 29 in the top and bottom. So we have negative 2 squared to 29 over 29. Then we move on to tangent, which is opposite, so negative 5 over adjacent, which is negative 2. So tangent of theta is negative 5 over negative 2, which I know can simplify to be 5 over 2. Then from here, my cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just reciprocals of these three. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that's just going to be the square root of 29 over negative 5. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's square root of 29 over negative 2. And then we have cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent, which is going to be the negative 2 over negative 5, which simplifies to be 2 over 5.